Good morning, everyone. This is the computer stimulation based on the idea I have explained in the previous videos. Now let us take a deeper look into design and principles of our mechanical ventilator. Let us take out the oxygen cylinder board and the separate elements out of the view. Now we will talk about the ventilator circuit. The ventilator's outflow, which is an inspirator tubing, is connected to the oxygen tubing here. In turn, the inspirator tubing is connected to the endotracheal tube at the patient's end by a Y joint. It has a valve on the inspiratory tubing side. We also see humidifier here. It is required as we are bypassing the paranasal sinuses of the patient with endotracheal tube. The balloon-like thingy you see is a collapsible balloon which will protect the patient from the unwarranted pressure and volume by acting as a temporary reservoir. The expand air from the patient will get in the expiratory tube and because of the valve near the Y joint, it will travel to get contained by UV laden container which is meant to eliminate the COVID-19 virus from the expired air of the patient. This will in turn decrease the risk of the COVID-19 infection amongst the healthcare professionals. Now let us continue our discussion. Let me rub this out first. The small tubing here is the air inlet through which the air enters in the gas cylinder. Let us zoom in. We see the components of the ventilator circuit dissected in front of us. Way cooler than the frog's dissection, isn't it? Let us see. We have the air cylinder which is transparent, the piston which is painted in blue, connecting rod which is also blue which will attach piston to the revolving wheel. Wheel is connected to the wheel support by the wheel rod which is painted in red. We will discuss each of these components in detail. Let us zoom in. Now let's talk about the wheel. The wheel is looking peculiar, isn't it? The holes which are placed on it are not for the artistic expression but to allow the finer adjustment of the tidal volume without needing the computer. Let me explain how. Each hole is placed on the circle which has a diameter ranging from 3 cm to 14 cm. So we have holes placed on the 3 cm diameter 3.5, 4, 4.5 and so on till 14 cm. The hole itself measures 7 mm in diameter. The volume of the air displaced by the piston will depend on the diameter of the circle on which the connecting rod is attached in its distal end. Example, if the connecting rod is attached on the 8 cm circle, then the displacement of the air would be pi r square h, where h is the diameter of the circle on which the distal end of the connecting rod is attached. Don't worry about this if you are feeling this is complicated. We will be discussing it more in detail as we progress further in this discussion. Let us zoom in on this tiny red thing. This is a pin which will connect the distal end of the connecting rod to the required hole on the wheel which will be based on the tidal volume requirement. Now let us zoom in to have a look at a piston. It has a shaft and a big cylindrical head. The head has grooves to fit the rubber rings so that air will not escape from the cylinder. The radius of the piston head is 4.8 cm in this design. This will be the R in the pi R square H equation. Let us see how these components will be fit together as we zoom out. Have a look at how these components are coming together. Now finally, we are taking a look at the connecting rod. It has the proximal end which will attach to the air cylinder by a piston and a distal end which will attach to the pin which will in turn connect it to the hole appropriately to the circle depending on the tidal volume requirement of the patient. And this is how it will be aligned perfectly. Let us have a look at this assembly from the bird's eye view. 
let us talk about the tidal volume calculation in depth. The displacement of the air done by the piston can be calculated by pi r square h formula. h here stands for the moment of the piston. h will be equal to the diameter of the circle on which the distal end of the connecting rod is attached by a pin. Example, if the pin is placed at the 8 cm hole, then the displacement of the air would be pi r square h. Value of pi is 3.14, r will be 4.8 and h will be 8. If we calculate it, it will be coming around 578 cm cube, which will be equal to the 578 ml of air. The table on the right side shows the tidal volume estimation for the each hole placed on the wheel, so that tidal volume can be adjusted depending on the patient's age, weight, and disease condition. We have zoomed in to see the luminal radius of an inflow and outflow tubing, which is 2.2 cm. It will be important later when we will calculate the flow through the tube. At the motion study of design, rotation of the wheel causes slider motion of a piston. The proximal displacement of the piston in one rotation is equal to the diameter of a circle on which the connecting rod is attached to the wheel. We have explained this before the pi r square h would be the tidal volume. Let us talk about the rotation per minute and its correlation with the respiratory cycle. Time to complete one revolution would be divided into two halves. The first half would inject the air into patient, which would be corresponding to inspiratory time. The second half would suck air from atmosphere this will not correspond to the expiratory time because one way valve will be placed on the inspiratory tubing. Thus, only atmospheric air would be sucked in into air cylinder and not the air from the patient's lung. The expiration here will be done by the passive recoil of the lung and the chest wall, and it is normally twice as long as the inspiratory time. Thus, if the respiratory rate is 12 per minute, then each breath would be 5 second duration, out of which 1.6 second allocated to inspiration and 3.4 second would be allocated to the expiration. We will be needed to complete one rotation into 3.2 seconds, which is 18.75 rotation per minute. And 1.8 second should be the pause after each rotation of a wheel so that 1.8 plus 3.2 will be equal to 5 second of breath again in a more simplified way so the time of a one breath would equal to inspiration plus expiration inspiratory to expiratory ratio is 1 is to 2 so the revolution time would be 1.6 plus 1.6 is 3.2 seconds. See, easy peasy, isn't it? Now we will do the kinematic analysis of a piston. Now this is a very cooler stuff. First we need to draw this white line passing through the central axis of the air cylinder and the center of a wheel. The second blue line is passing through the center of the wheel and the center of the hole on which the connecting rod is placed. The phi will be the angle made by the connecting rod to the white line and the theta will be the angle made by the imaginary line joining the center of the wheel to the hole on which the distal end of the connecting rod is attached. L will be the length of the connecting rod which is 20 cm in this design. Omega would be the angular velocity of the wheel which is calculated by multiplying rotation per minute by 6. Its unit will be in degrees per seconds. In our case, RMP into 6 will be coming around 112 degrees per second. I have put down the formula for the displacement of the piston at any given theta. Acceleration of piston is also calculated by this complicated formula I have put down. Once we have the acceleration, we can calculate the force which will be equal to the mass into acceleration. We already know the formula for pressure, which is force upon area. Thus, we can calculate the pressure 
inside the air cylinder. One more variable which would be needed to be taken into account is friction, which will be caused by the rubber rings on the grooves of the piston head. This friction will be opposing force to the moment of a piston. The velocity of air inside the inspiratory tubing will be different than the velocity of air inside the air cylinder. By using the Bernoulli principle, we can calculate the velocity inside the inspiratory tubing if we know the velocity of air inside the air cylinder, because the volume of the air would remain the same. The Bernoulli principle states velocity into area product would remain the same if all other variables like temperature and volume remains the same. So V1 into A1 will be equal to V2 into A2. V1 is the velocity of the air in the air cylinder and the A1 is the cross section area of an air cylinder. V2 will be the velocity of the air in the inspiratory tubing and A2 will be the cross section area of the inspiratory tubing. The velocity of the piston can be calculated by the, by the displacement upon the time taken to travel through that displacement. So we already know the maximum displacement could be the 8 cm in our design and the time taken will be 1.6 second for half of the cycle. So 8 upon 1.6 will be coming around 5 cm per second. The radius of the air cylinder is 4.8 cm and that of the inspiratory tubing is 2.2 cm. Thus, the velocity inside the inspiratory tubing calculated by this formula is coming around approximately 23.8 cm per second. Out. Now we will discuss about the mass of the piston and what it should be. We already know the force will be equal to mass into acceleration. We also know the pressure will be the force upon the area of cross section. In ventilator, the peak inspiratory pressure we know should be 10 to 15 centimeter of water and the peak expiratory pressure should be 5 centimeter of water. The centimeter of water would be needed to convert into Newton per meter square and thus we will get the piston mass by this formula. Simple. This concludes our ventilator design and principal discussion. Because of the lockdown in our country, we are unable to acquire necessary hardware to able to convert this CAD model into a working model. If any of you have the resources to build it, feel free to email us for the CAD files or a drop in comment on this YouTube video so we will share it for free because this is an open access project. If you have better ideas to improve this, feel free to give comments and feedback in the comment section or drop us an email. You are also welcome to join our team. If you are a government official or a health official, please reach out to the companies in your country who would able to mass produce it on a larger scale. Until now, COVID-19 pandemic has affected developed nation more who have a good healthcare capacity, but even that is inadequate facing the scale of this pandemic. In a developing countries, it would be a bigger challenge once number of cases begin to surge. So I urge the leaders to prepare for this beforehand by increasing the healthcare capacity, especially the ventilators. Thank you for your time and be safe.